Canberra. Let's stay in Canberra, though, but and cross to the Greens Senator for New South Wales, David Shoebridge. Uh, David, thanks for joining us. I think it's the first time we've spoken since you've switched to the Senate. So you've gone through uh, local government, state government, now you've made it to the big show in Canberra. Congratulations. Yeah, Chris, once a recovering councillor, always a recovering councillor. Uh, but, you yeah, know, it's, it's, it's good to be here. Now, you've got to tell me uh, about the Greens' attitude to climate change. You know, I find it alarmist and uh, most parties actually in this country too a bit delusional, seeming to pretend that our policies can influence a climate where uh, global emissions continue to rise. But what, what, what strikes me as unusual is the, is the antipathy of the Greens towards nuclear energy when so many environmentalists around the world realise that if you want affordable, reliable energy to power the world into the future that's emissions-free, there is no option but to go nuclear. Well, pretty much no credible um, energy academic would, would agree with you on that, Chris. It's neither affordable um, or achievable. Uh, you want to have a look at just one example, um, you know, one that sticks in my mind. The, 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 the only current uh, nuclear reactor that, that's on the table and being constructed in France. I think last time I checked, it's now a $30 billion, um, 30 billion Australian dollars to build that one reactor in France. Um, and only that, I think it's at least a decade over, overdue. Um, you could have a list of these projects. Uh, we're in a climate crisis. You and I might disagree on that. But um, all the climate scientists say we're in a climate crisis. We're feeling that effect. And we don't have three decades to wait for a $45 billion reactor to be built. And that's just the plain economics of it. It's the plain <laughs> science of it. It won't help. But the, the plain reality of it is actually different to that because, for instance, France has now uh, announced a, a, a program to expand its nuclear power. It's already had up to 70% of its power delivered through nuclear energy. It's now going to double down on that because of the uncertainties in renewable and other energies. You know it feeds a lot of that energy to other neighbouring countries in Europe. The UK is also getting back into nuclear. I mean, it was pretty expensive compared to coal and gas, but if you want reliable energy, it gives you the security for long-term power and, of course, the technologies are making it cheaper all the time. Why, why wouldn't Australia look at it, especially as one of the largest suppliers of, of uranium to the world? If we wanted to um, see our power become vastly more expensive, not address the problem for two decades, then we do take your option, Chris, and go down the nuclear path. I often hear um, elements of the right in politics start talking about things like small modular reactors. Well, I, the only one that I know that's um, anywhere sort of, you know, been in the construction phase, I think there's one in Argentina. It's currently at least a billion dollars Australian. Uh, it's nowhere near being turned on. And it's going to produce the same amount of power, that one billion dollar unfinished project in, engine, in, in Argentina, as two wind turbines. Like yeah, two wind turbines for like, the, you know, the, one thousandth of that cost. You could already have the power up and running. Every but, every credible um, energy economist says it's it's solar and wind and storage. It's pumped hydro. Well, Build it now. The technology's well, here. That's well, how we address it. The, the trouble is they don't. And the trouble is that no country has been able to deliver that. Every country that's tried to go down that path has ended up like us. That is, uh, power prices going up and reliable, reliability Chris, going you're not, down. So you're not how pretending. Do, how, how do you, you can't address... say we've tried to go down that path. We've just we got have... rid of the Morrison government. It spent 10 years avoiding that path, we've, um, we've, we've, you know, holding on to clunky old 50-year-old coal-fired power stations. We have not been going down that path. We've got it's more about than, time we did. We've got more than 25% renewable energy and that's forced prices up and reliability down. How do you deal with the example of France? All that reliable emissions-free electricity and it's cheaper than in places like Germany. Well, I've, I've told you about the only live experiment in France at the moment about building a new nuclear reactor. You may not like it, but it's 30 billion Australian dollars. It's a decade over time and it doesn't look like it's going to be turned on at any point. If you've got a spare 30 billion dollars that you want to invest, go for your life. But we're... The public shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> but uh, we're... Consumers, consumers shouldn't be paying for that for one for one project that will be two, three, four decades to actually get up to speed. It's yeah, not how you deal with a crisis, Chris. And it'll pump uh, emissions-free energy out for probably close to 100 years. But in Australia, we've invested yeah. more than $60 billion 
on solar and wind that is not there when we want it. So who, who's who's doing this right? No well, one. I thought you just said it's producing 25% of our power and it's doing but, that in, in a vacuum or even a host, with a hostile federal government, which has been doing everything it can not to have an integrated network um, of renewables and storage. And even in the face of that, we still get 25% of our power from renewables. We have the best have to. renewables have real estate on that. the planet, Chris, on the planet. There's been a mandate. We have the best have renewables real estate it. on the planet. Let's use Great. that. Well, that's good. We can do what no one in the world has ever been able to do and uh, and uh, we'll prove them all wrong. Let's hope so. Well, Thanks. well, Chris, everybody says the cheapest is renewables and storage. Yes, but it's not there when you want it. You can't store it long enough. Uh, well, I... I, I I think you might have mis not heard me say storage. It's yeah. pump hydro, it's battery, it's storage in combination with solar and wind. All of the energy experts say if we distribute that in a smart network across the country, we can achieve this. In fact, we can we can oversupply power and become a, a net energy exporter, a, a renewable energy superpower. It's actually exciting, Chris. Get on board. Yeah. Oh, it's That's it's where we're going. It's exciting. I, Get on I, board. I've heard the excitement go up and all I've seen is power bills go up and uh, energy blackouts along the way. But we'll keep the conversation going. Thanks for joining us, David. We are out of time.